life changing. This book tells and fills us with scripture from the Holy Bible. And it explains it in ways that are, uh, if we don't take the time to ask the questions, we don't understand it. But when we read and we start to ask the questions, we start to get it. And I used this idea, <laughs> I'm so excited, I'm about to pop to tell you some testimonies, because I've been away for three weeks. I took Biblical Foundations of Freedom to, uh, to a grieving widow. She had lost her husband, and she was grieving, grieving, grieving. And it was her third husband. She had lost three husbands. And this last one, the, the death was horrible, and she was the only one there with him to the end when he died. And she's 92 years old. And she decided that life is too hard and she's too, it's too confusing and she wanted to die and she didn't care to live any longer. And I was full on biblical foundations of freedom, <laughs> wellspring. And every time something came up in her thinking and in her speaking and in her emotions, I would stop and I would say, do you want to keep that or do you want to change it? Because God purges your conscience. And you know, this woman is a woman who had been raised in churches, but she'd never really thought about and stopped to think about what does it mean the blood of Jesus purges your conscience? What does that mean? That means that we get washed. If you will let the blood of Jesus purge your conscience, you will not be replaying those mistakes you've made in the past. Is that good news? Yes. Yes. I watched this woman, by the way, y'all, <laughs> this precious woman that I was ministering to for three weeks is my mother. And the reason that I got, I'm here in the first place, the reason I'm even in Wellspring and, and that Robert is in Wellspring and, and, and that our lives are so different is because uh, almost 20 years ago, I took this book to my mother's house after she lost her second husband. And so she, we stopped and we prayed and I watched my mother totally changed. It happened again. Now the interesting thing about what I saw is that if you don't stay in the atmosphere, that's what we call it, staying in the atmosphere. If you're not practicing it daily, the scripture says the enemy will come and steal the word of God right out of your heart. And you know when you're in trauma, the enemy sends in double accusing spirits. And who knows that if you're with a dying person, it's trauma. Right? So I led my mother through trauma prayers. And I led her through self-bitterness prayers because you know what happens when somebody dies? You start thinking, what could I have done? Why didn't I say this? Or why didn't I help him with that way? Or what, you know, or if somebody, you know, all, all of the traumas that, you, that you've experienced in your life, you start thinking, you start beating yourself up. You start thinking you're the one that <laughs> caused it, you know? And I led her through prayers. Self, self bitterness, get rid of that self bitterness. Stop beating yourself up for what has happened. Accept what happened. If you didn't like it, repent. Let the blood of Jesus purge your conscience so that you're no longer replaying it. Because what we know about brain research is that it can happen one time. You can say one ugly thing to somebody one time, but if you replay it over and over and over again, what happens? Your brain registers as if you have done it that many times. That's why God's word said, forgive. Forgive yourself. Forgive others. Yeah, God, Jesus, I used to think Jesus came to forgive me. Well, guess what I've learned? <coughs> Jesus came to teach me how to forgive. <laughs> <laughs> he taught me how to forgive others constantly. It's not a one-time thing. I just want to go hit right to this, and then I need to get to the lesson tonight. <laughs> um, but welcome, welcome, welcome. So thank you for listening to this testimony because it is so exciting for me. I watched my mother literally transformed Amen. from a woman who could not remember 
where her checkbook was or even um, who had been to her house the day before or what she, anything. She, could, she was totally in confusion and she was constantly beating up herself saying, I'm losing, I can't, I can't remember, I can't, I don't know. She was constantly <coughs> saying, I don't know. If we've, a bit, if we've been saying, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, repent. Yeah. Repent, the kingdom is near. Stop saying it. I watched, we prayed, we repented, we stopped saying it. Guess what happened? She started remembering. <laughs> exactly. Instead of saying, I don't know, she stopped and she said, Lord, you've given me a sound mind. I have the mind of Christ. What's the answer? Because the Holy Spirit will tell you. Okay. And literally, it changed. It, the major changes, I want to tell you, the major changes happened in the first week. Like there was such amazing change in one week of praying, and we prayed a lot. I mean, we were the only two there, and we got, I got to pray as many times as I wanted to. Because she was cooperative. She wanted it, you know. After she repented for wanting to die, because she was lost and she was hurting, right? But once we got past that and major changes, then week two and week three were tuning it. We're tuning it. We're tuning it. We're getting it set so that yeah, there's no more cursing her brain. But you know what would happen is she would say, "Mom," and I'd say, "Mom, that's called cursing your brain." God said, bless your brain. Satan says, curse your brain. Which do you want to do? I would always say, what? which do you choose? Yeah, which, do you choose? which do you choose? And I left her with one word, <clears throat> one sticky on her wall. Guess what the word was? Choose. Choose, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, choose. Have you, thanked, <laughs> have, have you thanked God today for your free will? No. Yeah. <laughs> one thing we stopped doing was with her, she was blaming, blaming herself, blaming doctors, blaming, even blaming me. She, I got her, she wanted new blinds this, because she's, she is 92. <laughs> <laughs> and she really didn't like having to shut all the blinds, so she wanted new blinds, and so we, I said, do you want them? Okay, we'll get them, got them up, got them ordered, and she started telling people, I made her do it. I was like, oh, wait a minute, Mom. <laughs> That's called blaming. It's like, let's change how we speak it. And she started changing how she spoke. She quit blaming anybody for anything and started taking full responsibility for all of her choices. Literally, I feel good. I left her alone for the first time in her life. She's never been alone. She's wow. been married since she was 16. Wow, wow, wow. 92. And she's 92. Wow. And she is ready to have a personal relationship with the Lord. Because remember, we don't do religion. In fact, we try to get rid of religious spirit. All the have tos, need tos, got tos, shoulds, all that stuff out the window. We're doing personal, face-to-face -face relationship with the Lord. And guess what? The Word of God is fast. It's active. It's sharper than a two-edged sword. And that means it doesn't take very long. Which brings me to this. <laughs> we do one-on-one -on -one ministry here. And it does not take years and years and years and years of, of, of counseling. Because the word is fat. It takes sessions of true heart involvement to see major changes, even in one prayer. Even in one prayer. And we, we see it over and over again every day. Each one of us that are in those rooms praying with people one-on-one, -on -one, we stand and we say the same testimony. It's amazing. So if you're interested, if there are things that are bugging you in the areas of bitterness towards other people, bitterness towards yourself, jealousy, envy, rejection, fear, occult practices, or unbelief, which happens to be called re rebellion in the Word of God, <laughs> Everything that's bugging you, everything that's causing trouble in your life falls into one of those categories. And our God has the answers. And the answers are called the truth. Mm -hmm. And what do we know about the truth? 
The truth sets set you free. free. Okay, binding spirits doesn't set you free. The truth, truth sets you free. Yeah, now we talk a lot about spirits because God said, I'm not looking at your outsides, I'm looking at your spiritual insides. So we, 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 we want to know about the spirits. So we're going to talk about it a lot tonight because we're going to be looking at occult practices. And we're going to really look into what that means. But I encourage you to do this one-on-one. -on -one. We still, all the staff, we still do what we call tune-ups. And that's basically what I did with my mom. Gave her a good old tune-up. <laughs> Just like a vehicle. Yeah. She had gotten in, you know, I, we did that 20 years ago when her second husband died. But you know what? If you don't stay with it, the enemy steals it. And you go back into the, you go back into Babylon. You go back into the ways of harlotry. Which your your pre-programmed uh, habits. Yeah. yeah, yeah, or the world. You know, whatever you take in, that's why it's so important to start asking yourself, what do you let your eyes see? What do you let your ears hear? What are you feeding yourself? Because that stuff has spiritual significance. You know, one, um, one horror movie, as an example, will open the door to fear. You know, are we, are we willing to do that? We get to choose, right? So I'm in chapter 11 tonight, and I know you had a great teaching last week on, on fear. Woohoo! Cindy. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Anyone have a testimony? Did you find or notice any worries or fears in your life? Anybody want to share any testimony? Boy, did we have a lot of fears to pray through with my mom. Fears of being alone for the first time. Yeah, fears of making, fears of being responsible for your own choices. Yeah, fears of the future. Yeah. So there's lots of things we could choose to be fearful about, or we could choose to have faith. Anyone want to share a testimony? Come on, y'all. We love testimony. <laughs> okay, fine. Test yeah, okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> well, I noticed um, this week, actually, that um, I was having a lot of anxiety getting ready to do some things, and so I was procrastinating, and it seemed obvious that there was fear behind it, right? So, of course, I went through the prayer, and then, of course, in counseling with Kathy, she actually named the fear, and then we, we handled that. But um, okay. But I don't think I never saw fear behind procrastination before. Okay, okay, yeah, that's right, good job, yeah, yeah. You know, I, ha I would go on and spend the whole time talking about testimonies about how God is with us and there is no reason to fear. And when we can finally get that through us, I had three weeks of trying to get everything done and you know what I, what I learned, I, you know, because I've been steeped in Wellspring, I didn't worry about any of it, and God designed everything I mean, even to the point of every person I needed to speak to, everything that needed to happen, every appointment that needed to occur, everything, a whole list. And it was a long list. It all got done. And there was no stressing mm -hmm. because I knew that God cares about the things that concern us. He perfects the things that concern us. Yes, Mr. Wasn't Coulter. Was it the case that even when you slept at night, the thoughts you needed to have for the next day were available to you? Yeah. yeah. Can I just tell you a quick, one more quick testimony? <laughs> so my mom wanted me to do something on, on the, the computer that I'd never done before. And now I, she didn't have a computer, so I was doing it on a little tiny phone. And one night I spent four hours trying to get this one thing accomplished. And I could not. So I laid it down, went to bed the next day. And I prayed that night, or that night I prayed. And the next day, I don't know how it happened, but I picked up that phone, and there was the screen I needed. <laughs> and I said, God, you did this. Yeah, uh, I couldn't have done it, but and it occurred. Now, Fran, did I see your hand up? You have a... Yeah, yeah I, was, um, I was just going to share that last week I seen a professional counselor, and um, he, he said it was going to take three to five years for the thing that I've seen before. Three to five years. I've only seen him twice now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And um, I'm like, I, I don't really want to wait five years, so I canceled all my appointments. They're every Wednesday. All right. <laughs> all right. 
and come to freedom night. Yeah, yeah. That's right. Where, where the word is fast. The word is fast. The truth is fast, and it sets you free fast. Well, tonight we're going to look at, um, and this is the book. I'm, we're teaching out of this, and this is the kid's version. What's the name of it? Which do you choose? Because the whole thing comes down, this whole thing is, are you going to believe Satan's lies, or are you going to believe God's truth? Which do you choose, right? And the whole chapter, the whole chapter 11 on the occult in the biblical foundations of freedom comes down to the kids' version, which is, the enemy wants you to not trust God most high. God says you can trust him. Which do you choose? So let's look at that tonight, okay? And let's do a little repentance for times when we have chosen to trust something besides God most high. So the occult is what we're going to look at tonight. Here's the principalities. This is what I told you earlier about everything that's bugging you comes under one of these categories. Bitterness towards others. Bitterness towards yourself. <clears throat> Jealousy and envy, rejection, fear, call practices, or unbelief, also known as rebellion. Tonight, we're going to look at the occult. Now, that word occult, a lot of people get it mixed up with the word cult, C-U-L-T. <laughs> okay, this is occult, occult, O-C-C. Okay, the difference is a cult is a group who follows and a occultic practice. So we're going to look at occultic practices. And we're going to learn what is an occultic practice, why isn't it got not, what, what is it about it that, uh, and where do they come from, okay, and why are they used? Because there's something called the mystery of iniquity, okay, in scripture. It's called the mystery of iniquity. And that mystery, applied to occult practices is what is it that's so appealing to an occult practice? Mm -hmm. That mystery of iniquity, and iniquity means lawlessness, right? That lawlessness that causes us to go away from God's, from God's definition. Well, Webster's definition is claiming the use or knowledge of the supernatural secret. Okay, so the secret part of it. Now, why anything that you can't know unless you join the group? That's the secret. And what does God say? He says, I boldly <coughs> proclaim promises that I intend to keep. Now, he does say there's treasures hidden in his word. And if you're willing to dig them out, you're going to find that the last treasure you find is the best one of all. Okay, you know the parable of the, how Jesus turned water into wine and the guy said, hey, you saved the best for last? Mm -hmm. Well, that applies to us in that every time you learn something new about God, it's, you say, he's saving the, the last thing that you just found out is like the best. That's why you can keep on learning about God your whole life and you can keep on being excited about who he is and who you are and what he has for us in his kingdom and his ways and his words, they just, it just keeps getting more and more exciting because he keeps saving the, the, the best for last. In other words, keep digging. <laughs> Don't stop. There's no end to it. We never get there. Don't think that just because we've been going through this many, 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 many times that we never have to pray a forgiveness prayer, <laughs> right? What it means is we play them a lot faster than we ever thought. <laughs> yeah. We don't like the taste of bitterness. It tastes icky, right? We don't like the blindness of jealousy. It blinds. All right. So hidden from view to hide. Cover up, conceal. I can conceal the truth, cover the truth. And in astronomy is where the word occult came from. It's the eclipse. So when the earth and the moon 
and the sun line up. So if I'm the sun and this is the earth and the moon comes in, in between, this is called the occult moon because it hides the sun. Even though it's little, it's 400 times smaller than the sun because it comes in between us. It's called the occult moon. So you apply that to the word of God. Anything that comes between you and God that you're putting your faith in is an occult practice. So what are you doing? What are you, where are you running to? What are you doing to get truth? to get healed, to get salvation, to get, and by salvation, salvation doesn't mean just a one-time event. Salvation is daily. Today is the day of salvation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you have bitterness, today is the day to get rid of it. Mm -hmm. If you have fear, today is the day to get rid of it. That this occult thing will pop up and you can get rid of it as soon as you recognize it. So how do you recognize it? Discernment. Remember chapter 2 in the book, discernment. Your ability to recognize God or not God. If, if, you, if you get something here and it's not God, get rid of it quickly. Because that's going to save you. <laughs> and the scripture says that the devil, Satan, entices unstable souls. Isn't that icky? Mm. The word entice, can't you just see it? It's kind of like a it's kind of like a propaganda word, isn't it? Trying to get somebody to do something they don't really want to do. But come on, everybody's doing it. Or come on, you're the last one to know. Or come on, it's going to change you and you're going to be um, mind altered. Yeah. So this occult, yeah, Kathy, you want to add something? Anybody would be afraid of that. <sighs> yeah. It hurt anybody's feelings. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Right. Exactly. So if Satan is, is, is enticing unstable souls, how do we get stable? We stand on the rock. We stand on truth, even in the storm. And we can't be moved. And so when we hear something that's not true, then we know, nope, not going to go there. And if we've gone there already, hallelujah, <laughs> it's a repentance prayer, right. and we can get back on the road wiser than before. Mm -hmm. Wiser. Because we can, yeah, all of us make mistakes, but God has put into his design forgiveness, repentance, and changing our thinking. Everything is about our thinking. What are you thinking? What are you thinking? God says he wants you to be paying attention to what you're thinking. When I would ask my mom, what are you thinking? She would say, I don't know. She doesn't say that anymore. Because we're the only people, we're the only creation that God designed that has the ability to step outside of ourselves and look at our thinking. It's called metacognition in science. It means you think about your thinking. And God wants you to notice what you're thinking so that, why? Because he wants you to change your thinking, to line up with his thinking. He wants you to say no to the enemy's voice and yes to his voice. And it, once we get that and start doing that quickly and on a minute-by-minute -minute basis, mm -hmm. life straightens out. Because yet, yet, I've tried life both ways. <laughs> Bumpy road, paved road. <laughs> Which do you choose? Janice chooses paved road. <laughs> paved with the word of God. All right, the definition. Any belief or practice, what do you believe? You cannot be healed until you can state what you believe. And then you can check it with the word of God. So if, some, if some, you say, well, I'm afraid of this, this, and this. Why? I don't know. Can't go anywhere. Satan wants you to think that it's okay not to know. If you say, I don't know, that's called, don't make me responsible. 
God wants us to be fully responsible. So he says, any belief or practice that comes between you and God. We're going to look at some things the scripture says. Leviticus, God condemns wizards. That's pretty clear. <laughs> Deuteronomy, playing with spirits, abomination. Pretty clear. Now, as I'm going through these scriptures, and if I hear a hallelujah, what does that tell me? That tells me, so we need let's to pray. stop and pray. Right. Because remember, there's no condemnation when we open our eyes to the truth and we realize, oh my gosh, I was doing that. I went to a fortune teller. Lord, hallelujah, <clears throat> forgive me. It's a repentance prayer. It's not further condemnation. It's hallelujah, you're coming out of it. A repentance means I'm not gonna go back to any fortune tellers. That's what true repentance means. Satan is a counterfeiter. He will try to get you to counterfeit re repentance. True repentance means I'm going right back to looking face to face to God and I'm not going to change. Counterfeit says, oh, sorry God, but I'm going back. That's counterfeit. Mm -hmm. You see? So we really need to look at what are we doing and why are we doing it. God always says, check your motive, check your motive, check your motive. Most people that get into the occult, I'll tell you just from my personal experience with, with a lot of um, ministry, is power. They want power. God said, because they feel what? What's the opposite of power? Powerless. powerless. So if they're feeling powerless and they want power over their life and they don't know the Lord and his truth, they will choose occult power. Mm -hmm. And believe me, occult has power. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It has evil power, it will lead you to death, and it has power. But it doesn't have the highest power. God said, I gave you power. I gave me power, love, and the sound mind. And if you're using God's power, it will overcome all of the enemies. Yeah, Sean, you want to add? As you talked about this, I, I mean, this is kind of looking at it from a real secular point of view, but okay. politics. Mm -hmm. Like, they're both different cults that are in a fight over <coughs> your How? mind and your avoidance of God or your life or because you're looking for a system to <laughs> control right. yourself and others. I mean, perfect I, example. It's, it's, it's a, yeah, you're right on. It's a perfect example of Babylon. And what does the scripture say? Come out of Babylon. <laughs> okay? Yeah. And that doesn't mean don't vote. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that means you go, in, you go in and you vote the way God would be voting if he was here. Yeah. 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 Right? <laughs> Absolutely. Amen. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And condemn those that don't vote the same way that you did. Oh, yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah, right. Because uh, oh. let's talk about that for a minute. Because the God that we are to have unity of the spirit, not unity of our po politics. Mm -hmm. And if we are into condemnation, what's Luke 6, 20, 37 says, do not judge, do not condemn. Period. That's pretty clear, right? <laughs> And to realize that the spirit realm, the fight is in the spirit realm. Opinions are where you get to choose what you, everybody's getting to choose. And your political choice is your opinion. And so if you're fighting, if you are breaking spiritual unity and spiritual <clears throat> acceptance over opinion, come in for personal counseling and let's get that, mm -hmm. let's get that out of you. So that you can walk in unity. And the scripture says they will know us by our love. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That we're, we don't have to agree with everything, right? Mm -hmm. We're all in different places in our, and we call it, hey, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. 
Have <laughs> you ever heard that? It's an idiom. Okay, there's lots of idioms in scripture. But the idiom, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater, means, hey, if you hear something you don't like, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Keep the parts that are good. You might have heard it like, uh, eat, the, eat the meat and throw away the bones. Mm -hmm. And if you hear something, say, God, we always ask you as we're teaching, ask the Holy Spirit. Don't, tell, don't take our truth as your truth. Ask the Holy Spirit. You know, it would be very religious of you to accept everything that was said. Not think for yourself. And not think for yourself. God doesn't want, and we did it for years. Oh my gosh. We were as religious as they come. We would show up at church every Sunday. We didn't know one thing what the Bible said. Because we never read the Bible. Because we let the pastor read the Bible. And then we let the pastor tell us what he thought. And then we said, okay, it must be true. And it wasn't until we got the truth in us ourselves mm -hmm. and we started asking the Holy Spirit and we started getting a personal relationship with the Lord and we started going to, to be with other believers because we love it rather than because we had to. You can't, you can't, God doesn't want us to do anything that we have to. In fact, we encourage you as you become free, get rid of those words have to, need to, got to, should, must, ought to. Those wish. Wish. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm glad you said wish because you know what I say when somebody says I wish something? Say, are you wishing upon a star? What are you wishing upon? Because wishing isn't in the scripture. It's an occult practice. That's right. Yeah. So we want to take those words out of our vocabulary. We want to change how we speak. We want to get a new language and a new name. Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth is speaking. So when the heart gets changed, guess what? The mouth changes. And we don't talk like we used to talk. We don't say, I need to do this and I have to do that. We say, choose. I found that when I was working with my mom and we were dealing with a whole bunch of stuff, like trying to, you know, she was canceling the TV and doing a bunch of different things. And if I, if um, she would go into, well, this and this, and, and then she would say, well, I'm going to be traveling. I say, no, mom, here's what you say. <laughs> I said, try this. I choose to cancel my TV. <laughs> then you don't get all of that advertisement that, that they try to get you back. You know, they want to give you a deal. You know, if you wanted to keep me, why didn't you give me that 30 day, the $30 off a month before I had canceling? You know, that kind of stuff. But the point is, all the power is in the word choose. Choose. So I encourage you to use the word choose and take those other words out of your vocabulary. And let's continue looking at what 2 Kings 21, 6 says. <clears throat> Avoid dabbling in spiritism. And spiritism is that stuff where you're calling on animals for their strength and that type of stuff, okay? That's, that's one of the examples of it. Um, calling on the devil for strength, okay? A lot of people are willing to sell their soul to the enemy for power, for, for Babylonian power. You know, the world, it, we've got God's kingdom right in the middle of the world. And if you'll think of it like this, if there's a rug in the middle, this is how we teach it to the kids, there's a rug in the middle, it's a runner, and it's the kingdom of God. And all the blessings are in the kingdom. The rest of the room is the world. You get to choose anywhere you want to stand. If you stand in the kingdom, you follow God's rules, there's no sorrow in the kingdom of God. But, and if you want to have jealousy and envy, you need to stand over there. There's no blessings in it. But you can come back at any time you want when you're tired of the evilness of the world. And so you get this idea of, uh, of avoiding the things that are not of God. God destroys the charmers. What are charmers? Manipulators. Manipulators. Trying to get you to do what they want you to do. Yep. Okay? Mainstream media. There you go. That's a good word. Toby, that's a good word. That's a good word. It's like 
What are you listening to? Who are you letting speak to you? Who are you letting counsel you? Because if you are absorbed in certain things, you will be charmed. If you are, and we are designed by God, are, we're designed to be um, addicted to something. That's what Caroline Leaf, who talks about our brain, we're designed to be so in love with God that we can't get enough of him. But what does the enemy do? He puts something else in the middle yeah. between us. And so people get addicted to all kinds of stuff. Their phone, shopping. You know, we could make a whole long list. But the point is, where are you getting your satisfaction? Where are you get, where are you turning to the first thing in the morning? Where are you turning to in, when there's a trouble and there's a problem? Where are you turning to when you need an appointment and you don't know how it's going to happen? Whatever it is, nothing is too small to concern your Heavenly Father. He, he knows you that personally. He cares that much about you. Isaiah says, avoid astronomy, astro avoid astrology and fortune tellers. Now here's how occult works. God made everything. God's a creator. God created the heavens and the earth. God created constellations. God wrote his story in the constellations so that we would always have it and we would have a calendar and we would have a way. He put the sun and the moon so that we would have a calendar, right? And then we humans decided to occult that practice and make our own. So people who are into astrology, they take out God's story and they make up stories and they put them in there. And then they actually follow them. There are people who follow horoscopes before they get out of bed. They read their horoscope for the day. Now there is a story, but if it's a different story than God's story, it's an occult practice. And that's, how, that's the way. What they do is they take the, 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 the d design of it, take God's name out of it. Because remember, you have to test the spirits. If there's nothing about God in it, it's probably a cult. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you can pretty much guess that it has removed giving God the glory and put in something new. In God's design of the Hebrew language, there are numbers okay, that's called the grammatria of the Hebrew language, and the, word, the numbers mean something. Have you ever wondered why in, this, in the scripture it says they caught 153 fish? Why? Because 153 means something. What? <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember right this second. <laughs> but, um, but what I can tell you is there's something called, I think it has something to do actually now. Lord, tell me what it means. It has something to do with being fishers of men. Um, but that's a good question, and we can get the answer to that one very fast. But the point is, there's something called numerology. You know, and when I was in junior high, I would figure out who I was going to marry by how many numbers were in my name and how many numbers were in his name. And maybe this was the match. That's the, occult, that's the occult practice. There was truth in numbers that are important. And God's stuff was taken out of it. New stuff was put into it. And it's called the occult. So that's how you can tell if you're involved in occult stuff is, is God's truth in it. Fortune tellers, you know, any hallelujahs? Do we need to pray? Do we need to stop and repent? <laughs> okay. okay. So, how many hallelujahs do you get? Because, you know, <laughs> historically, <laughs> I mean, I know I have been to fortune tellers and all palm readers and, you know, all these festivals yeah. and things like that. Like, I have that book I highlighted a lot of stuff. So, yeah. I mean, hallelujah. Yeah. So, the way, the best way to do it, first of all, we can do a repentance prayer. 
Father, forgive us for being involved in turning to occult practices. So let's we'll do, do that it. one. Okay. Yeah. okay, let's start there. Okay. Um, Dave, I'll get you. Do you want to say it before or after the prayer? 153, I am God. I am God? Is yeah. that what it is? Uh -huh. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. See, I told you we could get the answer. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's why I love hanging out at, with, in the atmosphere. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There are people smarter and stu more studied, and, and we can say, help me with this. Yeah. All right. Father God, I confess to you in the name of Yeshua. Father God, I confess to you in the name of Yeshua. That I have gotten involved in occult practices in my life. That I have gotten involved in occult practices in my life. I ask you to forgive me. I ask you to forgive me. I forgive myself. I forgive myself. I thank you that I'm forgiven. I thank you that I'm forgiven. I repent. I, I repent. repent. I turn away from occult practices. In the name of Jesus, and by the power of his blood, I command the tormentors that have been assigned to me when I got involved in occult practices, leave me now. Holy Spirit, heal my heart, renew my mind, Tell me the truth. Tell me the truth. Tell me the truth. Anyone want to share? I think that the occult practice is so sly. I mean, people are looking for a direction in their life, so they go to a horoscope because it's written there and they can rely on it. I was with um, a group of women that belong to a church. And on Saturday, I sew with them every third Saturday of the month. And they started talking about how the moon determined when babies were born and how many of them were nurses and they saw more babies born on this and I'm like, wait, 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 wait a minute. The moon doesn't have anything to do with it. It's in God's plan. But it was, I think that, that the devil and the tormentors are so sly and so slick that we sometimes just glaze on by it. I mean, there were people there that were agreeing and laughing about it, and then I went, stop. That's not a God. And because they're all Christians, all sitting there telling me that they're a Christian, I could easily say that. I probably couldn't have done that at my work. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, sometimes we use wisdom to know when is the right time, when we have an opening. Because we can talk, we, you can't lead, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I think it was it was like it's so people are always looking for solutions and answers and it becomes easy and the, the the accuser makes it so easy to slip into his thinking. Yeah. Attractive. Yep. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Right. Right. Attractive. I actually had a picture of um like just this um, picture. This is what, what after the prayer. I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, no, no. no that's fine. Anyways, but I saw like um some of the the occultic practices that I was involved in. You know, kind of like um, going around in a circle that showed me, okay, well, Cindy, this is what you were involved in when you were young. This is what you were involved in in your 20s and 30s and involved in when you went to church. Yeah. You know, yeah. I was following that, those occultic practices. Mm -hmm. And so to me, that's like, okay, that could, those are some, those are entry points for me to have conversation. Further yeah. conversation. <laughs> Good. Oh, yeah. Oh, Stay. The subtlety of occultic things goes very, very deep where it's not just things that you would think are obvious, yeah. but things like nursery rhymes. Yes. Red Room Ring Around the Rosie. Yes. Or yeah. other things as you know, flashy as the Kardashians. 
Yeah, yeah, you're right. It's that thing that tries to get our attention. Yeah. One Nina. thing in our, our culture that was brought up by an elder some years ago was he said, our people need to stop saying they go in threes whenever somebody dies. Yes. Because they were, they were, people were agreeing and then three people were dying in the village. Yes. Yeah. And he yeah. said they need to stop doing that and they need to repent for that. Yeah. There's power in this. And there is. Uh, yeah, there is. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Liz. And then here in Alaska, there is the shaman. Yes. Right. And I, like, I knew one girl who said she was born having visions and being able mm -hmm. to tell mm -hmm. someone who died or mm -hmm. yeah. very prevalent. Absolutely. Kathy, you want to add something? Um, just to add to the um, what you said that the occult does have power and that we are windows and doors. Is when I was young, I played the Mary, Mary in the mirror. You know, oh, I did. Mary, Mary in the mirror, right? Yeah. Well, I'm I'm grown. I've got my own kids, and my three-year-old daughter was sitting on the sink next to me while I'm putting my makeup on for work, and she's sitting there, and she looks at the mirror and she says. No, Mary, I can't go with you. And I was like, really? We're done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 That was, I was the door yeah. to that. We, what, what I found in my own life, and I was, I was, I probably had to pray the most occult prayers. When I came to Wellspring, I probably had the longest list of things to deal with in the occult. And uh, because I was seeking I was a seeker. I would go to every every seminar, every uh, church. I was call, I was a self help junkie. Yeah. I call myself. A, I would I, if it was a self help book, I would buy it, and not only that, I would read it, <laughs> and I would follow it for a while, and but it didn't work, you know. And it, it kept, so what I was doing was seeking, 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 and then what happens? The truth sets you free. No more seeking. Now I seek the one who knows. And all my time now is spent on learning, seeking more about him and all that other stuff. You walk into Barnes and Noble and you can see the occult world. Mm -hmm. Just walk in. It is in your face, all of the occult practices. They've got books on them, which makes it look official. Enticing. Yeah, enticing. Acceptable. Thank you. Acceptable. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Can, Dave. I, can I give a testimony? Sure. Yeah. We love testimony. Uh, I was uh, with Gary Oates Ministries in Columbia, and some of the churches there that we were visiting had thousands of people. And it was a big advertisement that he was coming to do these healing seminars. And the occult groups came out in force to attack him with a vengeance. They threatened his life. They, um, they would come to meetings to curse the meeting. And these people, sometimes several fall out, convulsing, flopping on the ground like a fish. And, mm -hmm. um, one of the things that happened was uh, they put a curse on him and it, for his protected or whatever, you know, his wife said, well, Gary can't speak. Um, we need people that pray in the spirit. I'm like, ooh, pick me. I'll do this. Well, we need you to stay behind him on stage and pray the whole time. I'm like, let's dance, let's go. So all the guys from Alaska, there was three of us, mm -hmm. and we all piled up on the stage behind him, and while we were praying, he could talk. Mm -hmm. And it went on for three days, three days where he couldn't talk until, and as soon as we were done, then he'd shut down. And it, but that's a perfect example. It, it does have power. It does have power, and but a curse cannot come without a cause. So if we're afraid of the occult, if we're afraid of the enemy, if we're afraid of any of it, we must repent. Because right. fear opens the door. That's it. And so we got to get rid of the fear of a cult. Ross? I've learned that if I'm afraid of the future, I will do occultic things. Yeah, yeah. that's a good word. Yeah. Yeah. Can you explain that? What does that mean? Well, occulting is the chapter 10 now chapter 11, fear, fear is chapter 10 in that book for a reason. You 
It's a, it's a sin to wonder about what's going to happen, to worry about it. Just live in the present. Let Yahovah weave his ways in your life as a counselor, assuming I do my own work. And if I do not understand Yahovah's presence, then I will think about what might happen. And I don't like what might happen, so I do things to influence <coughs> the future. Mm -hmm. And those things I do become occult practices. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's so true. Thank Fran. Um, my grandchildren are reading books on magic and wizardry and stuff, and it scares me. And I don't know how to tell my kids about it or my, you know, my grandkids mm -hmm. or my son about it. Mm -hmm. Well, read those, read those screen well, numbers and just show them. Burn magic one, one, <coughs> yeah, one of the excellent ways is to pull out the Word of God and say, this is what the Word of God says. So it's not you saying, you, you don't do that. You're, what you're doing is you're showing them what God's Word says. Because the, and what you're doing there is you're planting a seed of truth. Seeds grow. They may not believe you today, but the word of God never comes yes. back empty. Yeah. Once it's planted, the Holy Spirit grows it. So your job is to plant truth. So we've been buying them lots of Bible story books and Bibles and stuff, and they're loving to read that. I wonder if Satan doesn't like that, and he just because she just bought that book. Like, <laughs> I mean, where did you find that book? But she bought it anyway. Yeah. It was on. It was on on magic. Yeah. Well, that that is that is a very common thing in 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 the world, is that and we hear you know oftentimes we hear, and people want to justify it. Oh, it's just a good book. Or, oh, the it's kids will read it, so it's okay. Mm -hmm. You hear the word yeah. just. Right. We want to take the word just out of our vocabulary, just like we want to take the word but. Scratch that. We want to scratch that but. <laughs> <laughs> scratch I, that. I trust God, but, but I'm no. going to do this, this, and this. I'm going to worry anyway. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we want to get what, notice what we're saying. So quick question about that. Yeah, like let's say you've got stuff in your library that needs to go away. Mm -hmm. um, is Do you need to burn them versus throw them in the trash? I know you don't want to give them to like the bookstore because then other people can buy them, right? Right. But is there something to burning? Anybody? I don't know the answer to that. Okay. And I would say, you know, probably there is. Okay. <laughs> but I don't know what it is. There's probably well, a reason why scripture it. says burn it. Yeah, I, I, would I, would say, I would say burn it because a friend of ours, um, her, her and her, her fiance decided to try a Ouija board and yeah. it scared them. Yeah. So she put it back up in the closet. Mm -hmm. And um, well, that's where it was in the closet. They played it and then um, and then she threw it away, but it, it ended up back in the closet the next day. Oh, yeah. Wow. So I would say burn it. Yeah. Oh. Burn it. Right. Yeah. So she put it in the dumpster, but the next day it was in the closit. <laughs> right. I would say so. All we need to do is state the word of God. See, the word of God is truth, and everything else is a counterfeit. And Satan is a counterfeiter. So we're going to look at that and how he counterfeits the truth. Yeah. The enemy is scared of the cross. Mm -hmm. If I could use the word deathly afraid. Yeah. He is afraid of the blood of Jesus. Yeah. He's afraid of the name of Jesus. Even when we pray over our children and our grandchildren, yes, yes. I heard a testimony recently that somebody's child uh, was a young adult, and their parents were she was were Christians. She had a friend who wasn't a Christian. Got invited to a rock concert. They got special tickets to go in the back <laughs> with the band. It was a satanic band group. The one girl got in. The lady that was taking the tickets told the other girl, you can't come in you're because you're a Christian. And she said, I'm not a Christian. Mm -hmm. And she said, well, you, she was a witch. The lady was a witch that was taking the tickets. Yeah. But see, the parents okay. prayed for their kid mm -hmm. and, you know, and apply the blood of Jesus. Yeah. And so that stopped that right at the door. Yeah. There is so much, I mean, that's where it's at. That's right. That's where all the power of Satan was broken, at the cross. Amen. And that's why in our prayers we say in the name of Jesus, Jesus. in the name mm -hmm. of Yeshua, which is his Hebrew name, and by the power of his blood. Amen. And by the power of his blood. I like what um, that was just commented on about um, 
about um, oh, it's time to bring that back on. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> keep going. <laughs> if it comes back, I will. Okay. I will say that. Shall okay. I go back? No. No? no that doesn't All right. Either. So in 1 Samuel, it says rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. So when we are purposely, when we know the word and we purposely don't do it, we're rebelling. And it's a form of getting our own way, which is witchcraft. Mm -hmm. And that any time you use manipulation, a lot of people who use anger, you know, rawr, you know, that they're trying to get their way. Okay, that's that form of manipulation. That's why you always have to ask, what is my motive? Everything that comes out of our mouth, start asking yourself, what is my motive? Every choice you make, what is my motive? You're gonna, it will, he will reveal to you the truth, and the truth is going to set you free. So in Isaiah, it says consulting wizards is wrong. In James, it says submit to the Lord, resist the devil. So submitting to the Lord says, God, your, your ways are higher than my ways. I'm choosing to follow you. There's 330 million gods just in India alone. There are so many gods that you could follow. That's why in Joshua it says, choose this day whom you're going to serve. And if you're going to choose to serve to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God who is the creator God, the God who is living God, the God who knows you by name, if you <coughs> choose to follow him, then submit to his ways. In other words, if, it's in, if it's, he, he's saying it's true, believe it. You don't have to have proof. What are you waiting for to believe it? Okay, or to follow it, Fran? Yeah, so, <clears throat> so, many, so many people, um, even myself, have, have made their cell phones or Facebook and things like that their, their God, and what you're doing is you're putting that before you read the Bible, or you know, putting that before you, you're like, oh, I don't have time, I, I still have to check my emails and stuff, I'm not even gonna make it to church. Yeah. You know, yeah. so we, we put things before God, right. and it becomes yeah. God. Yeah, and that's a repentance prayer right there. Yeah. yeah. Let's, do we need to do we need to repent for spending more time on our phone than we do in the Word of God? Yeah. Yes. That's our goal. Our goal is to spend more time with, with the Word, which will, which which brings life. Right. All right. Father God, I confess to you in the name of Jesus. Father, Father God, I confess to you in the name of Jesus. I spend more time on my and you name it, whatever I spend it is. More time. Time. Maybe it's fishing. <laughs> I don't know what your I don't know what your thing is. Okay. Yeah. Then I do in your word. Then I do in your word. Forgive me for this occult practice. Forgive me for this occult practice. I repent. I repent. I thank you that I am forgiven. I thank you that I am forgiven. Now take a minute right now, everyone, and receive, because God can give, 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 give forgiveness. But if you're not willing to receive forgiveness, that would be very arrogant. Yeah. Thank you, Father. Holy Spirit, heal my heart. Holy Spirit, heal my heart. Renew my mind. Renew my mind. Strengthen my discernment. Strengthen my discernment. And tell me the truth. And tell me the truth. Anybody here willing to practice 65 times to master a new habit? That's what the brain's research shows. They, if you want to get the habit of putting God first, practice it, literally, 65 times, without messing, you know, without, without going backwards. Mm -hmm. Okay, when you learn something correctly the first time, it doesn't take nearly as many practices as if you have to unlearn something. However, you have power from God Most High. It's called the grace of God. Mm -hmm. You have 
all the power you need to do anything that God is asking you to do when you choose him. So saying, so saying, oh, I can't do that, can't is a choice. Whatever you say, the scripture says that life and death are in the power of the tongue. And what you speak is what you're going to get. Does that make your words really important? Yes. Oh, your words are so powerful. You are made in God's image. Your words have the spiritual power to bring life and death. And that means to your relationships, mm -hmm. brings life and death to your hope, brings life and death to your, to your, to your uh, energies, that everything you say has a spiritual consequence. That's how important it is. That's why, you're, that's why your words change. That's why you probably won't be speaking the same way once you start truly with your whole heart following God's ways. Anything, uh, of course, so the second part of this verse says resist the devil. Resist is a biting word. You go, that was an accusing spirit. Like that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you make a sport of it. Catch an accusing That's spirit. Right. All right. Yeah. How do you do it? You listen to the voice. Mm -hmm. Because what does John 10 verses 4 and 5 say? It's the parable of the good shepherd. He says, my sheep know my voice. Yes. And their stranger's voice. They run away from. Notice there's two voices spoken about. Are you listening to God's voice or are you listening to the enemy's voice? And this is how you can tell. You hear something in your head like, I'm a, I'm a disaster. Whose voice is that? Is that my father in heaven's voice or is that the enemy's voice? That's how you do it. You say, that was the enemy's voice. Get out of here. My, it's not what my God says. I only believe what my God says. My God says I'm made in his image, and I am good. I might have made a mistake. I am good. Okay? And that's how you do it. That's how you resist the devil. It's called work. <laughs> and it says faith without works is dead. And it means you pay attention. It's called consciousness. That's why mind-altering drugs are so demonic. They want you to. That's why, that's why psychotic drugs that, and prescription drugs, you cannot medicate a spirit. And if you have depression, you better command that spirit of depression out of there. You can't medicate it so it stays there and you don't deal with it. See the difference? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it, it's, it, it, you get, you know how many people in the world and even in my family <laughs> have, have a diagnosis mm -hmm. of bipolar? Yeah. Do you know what bipolar is in yes. scripture? Mm -hmm. It's un, a, a double-minded person is unstable in all oh, their ways. ways. It's a thought disorder. And God says, take every thought and put it in order. Yeah. yeah. Make, it, make it orderly. Yeah. God is a God of order. Satan's a God of chaos. Which do you choose? Well, I can't help it. Well, get rid of the spirit of helplessness. <laughs> okay? <laughs> because that spirit is, tell, is counseling you. You can't help it. Is that what your Father in Heaven says? He says, I give you the explosive power that you need to overcome every situation in your life. Which do you choose? You get to choose. Isn't choice amazing? So amazing. Oh, so amazing. Yeah. Okay, so central to the occult is man's desire to become God. You want to say what's real. You want to say it's okay to read these books or to watch these kind of movies or to listen to this kind of music. You want to make the rules. That's what the two trees in the garden were. Either God makes the rules or you make the rules. 
And when we're, it's still going on today. We want to make our own rules instead of submitting to the Lord. We want to be the one that says, uh, we want to be the one that has the power of life and death. <laughs> but the king is the only one who has the power of life and death. Yeah. So there's two major deceptions. There's the belief systems and medicine. And there's nothing wrong with medicine. We believe, we go to doctors when we have to, when there's a broken leg, but I can tell you, I can tell you so many testimonies about what happens when people start relying on drugs and when people start following what the doctor says. Robert was saved from a knee operation and a heart operation because he said no to the doctor. <laughs> and he's well. And the doctors wanted to cut his knee open and they wanted to cut his chest open and they wanted to kill the strong part of his heart to match the weak part of his heart. That doesn't make sense. That's what we said. We said, no, thank you. And then we went to the healer. And he healed. So, what is your belief? Where is your faith? We're going to look at that. Why? Satan is a master counterfeiter. Now, what is it about counterfeiting? Because here's what he's going to do. He's going to counterfeit God's will. He's going to counterfeit God's word. And he's going to counterfeit the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Now, why? Because, here's the thing about counterfeiters. They have to look really close to the real thing. They have to look really close. So, that's why stuff like numerology, I'll just use that as an example, looks kind of close. Got numbers, the numbers mean things, you put them together, okay? So, it kind of has to look the same. It has to be important. Counterfeiters don't counterfeit pennies, do they? They only counterfeit big bills. bills. Yeah. That's oh, yeah. like the Da Vinci Code yeah. type stuff. Yeah, yep, yep. That's counterfeit. And, um, That's right. I know with Ekin Carr, they have a Holy Spirit. Yeah. Yep, just, okay, so you're just, understanding uh, this process. Counterfeiters only counterfeit important stuff. They don't counterfeit pennies. They don't counterfeit um, things that are not desired. Okay, so that's why. Now, I learned from Dave when he taught that the problem with counterfeiting is that erodes the confidence in the real thing. Yes. Okay, so we have counterfeiters, and he dealt with counterfeiters all the time in his in his work before he came to Wellspring, in the police force, and. It erodes the confidence in the real thing. And so, of course, Satan's going to be a counterfeiter. And when people are learning how to look at and understand money so that they can catch counterfeiters, they don't study every counterfeit there is. They study the real thing. So that the, you know the real thing well enough, bam, you'll spot a counterfeit. So that's the same thing as <coughs> our God. If we know our God really well, then when we hear something that's counterfeit, we're going to say, uh-uh. That's why you can catch that accusing spirit. Because the accuser is going to use deception and lies. And what is deception? Counterfeit. It's the counterfeits. Deception and lies. That's what he used. He comes to kill the Satan. Comes to kill, steal, destroy. How does he do it? Lies and deception. Yeah. So what? An example of counterfeiting the Holy Spirit. Yeah, uh, I think Dave. Uh, no, you didn't give that example, but we've had it here. We've had conferences where people would would um, preach. They would flop themselves down like fish, and or different things, and they would yell out things that were to be disruptive. Okay. Oh, okay. Now, okay. That's one example. That's one example. Now you think of Moses. He had a, he had a. Um, Staff. Our staff, and he threw it down, and it became a serpent, right? Well, if somebody did that today, everybody would yell, counterfeit, counterfeit. Okay, but we have to know the real thing. We have to know what all that meant to understand that that wasn't counterfeit. That's, the, that's real God stuff. So we have to look at what does the word say? You know, a lot of people say, oh, I just want to know God's will for my life. Read the scriptures. God's will for your life, he said, I want you to be sanctified. I want you to be 
Um, I want you to grow from your baby position of justified, grow up into your sanctified position so that you can be better at learning the truth and not calling evil good and good evil. Because he said, woe to you people who are calling this good and this evil when it's the exact opposite of what the scripture says. Right. Okay? And so uh, learning the truth is going to make it way easier for you to spot a counterfeit. Okay? God, and if many people call in and they say, oh, I just want to know God's will for my life. I want to know where I'm supposed to live. I want to, know what I'm supposed to, I want to learn who I'm supposed to marry. I want to learn wow, what car I'm supposed to drive. I mean, really. And it's like, you know what the will of God is? Choose and take him with you. Make him a part of every decision you make. Follow the word of God. That's his will for your life. He's got, he's told you what his will is. And so, thank you, God. It's more of a thank you, God, for telling me your, your will for my life. His will is that you follow his commands so that his joy is, will be in you and your joy will be complete. Anybody want complete joy? Yeah. <laughs> he tells us exactly how to get it. Robert, did you want to add? Woo! Yeah, <laughs> that's a good, that's a good addition. Uh, well, did, commit to the Lord whatever your plans are, and you will make them success. Yeah, there you go. That's that's beautiful. A lot of people want to make their own plans and then say, "God bless my plans." That's the opposite of what God says. A lot of people want to say, "God, take this fear away from me," and God says, "You take it away. I've given you the power." Quit desiring, quit of putting up with that fear and get rid of it. And so uh, we want to be real clear that we're not asking God to do something he's told us to do yeah. with our free will. Yeah. I think, you know, we're talking about this counterfeit. Yeah. I think, and you said earlier, Satan is a master counterfeiter. Yeah. And so I think it's a lot deeper than that. I mean, I hear what you're saying, and I don't disagree with any of that, mm -hmm. but being a master counterfeiter, he kind of can see your life and the things you're going through. And if you're not... You know, if you don't have a very close walk with the Holy Spirit, or if you don't have a very, um, I don't know if I want to say intimate relationship with yeah. the Holy Spirit, but there has to be a familiarity with the Holy Spirit. Absolutely. Because I see this in my life where um, <clears throat> I can easily be deceived, and, you know, that I walk that path, and all of a sudden I'm in the woods, you know, or I'm, I'm lost. And I'm like, yeah. you know what, that wasn't God, but it looks so close like him. Yeah. And I, and I still have that struggle uh, yeah. in discerning, is this the Holy Spirit? And so I'm much more cautious now. Yeah. And it's not always for the better, you know, yeah. but nevertheless. And I just feel like... It takes practice. It does. And excellence is built into it. Remember, God didn't call us... He, he, he called us to be excellent. And excellence has forgiveness built into it. And then we have wisdom from what we've learned. From You're mistakes. getting better and better at it. That's why the Word of God says that discernment is grown. It's an ability. An ability, you start out crummy and you get good <laughs> as you practice. Yeah. Can we do a repentance for all the times that Amen. we uh, thought we were serving God but we were serving sure. counterfeit sure. spirits? So that you can, so you can put it behind your back. Now here's how there's counterfeit forgiveness, okay? True forgiveness. We're going to forgive ourselves right now, okay? We're going to do a repentance prayer and, for, and ask God to forgive us. He's going to forgive us because it's his nature to forgive and because we're asking him. He does right in the, in the prayer. Your job is to receive it. And then your job is to um, put it to forgive in the same manner because God's more interested in the manner in which you do things. He's more interested in the manner in which you do things. The intention. Yeah. The man, your manner is like your characteristics, attributes, traits. Are you doing, you know, he's not interested in your tithe, as an example. He's interested in the manner in which you give the tithe. He's, he's, he's way, he's, that's way more important to him. He's not interested in you serving at church. He's interested in... The, the heart behind it, the manner in which you do it. And forgiveness 
God's way says, I'm putting it behind my back to remember it no more. Satan's going to say, don't you want to remember it? No. And you're going to say, no. I'm doing it God's way. It's forgiven. And it just takes a couple of times till it's gone. And I can tell you about forgiveness. You can lay your head on the pillow. If you go through your day forgiving instead of being annoyed all day, you will lay your head on the pillow at night and you will not have a clear memory of any of the events in the day that were annoying. That's how, that's forgiveness. And your sleep. And your sleep is peaceful. Because he wants you to sleep in heavenly peace. If you're having trouble going to sleep at night, start naming all of God's names. He's your strong tower. He's the righteousness. He's the banner over you. He is uh, the wings that are protecting you. You start laying their name in that instead of thinking of all the things that are, you've got to do tomorrow or all the other things. You know, say a prayer and then think of him. You'll be asleep. That's how it works. And so let's do a repentance prayer, okay? Father, I confess to you. Father, Father I confess to you. I have followed counterfeits. I have followed counterfeits. Because I didn't know your voice. Because I didn't know your voice. Forgive me. Forgive me. I repent. I repent. I thank you that I'm forgiven. I thank you that I'm forgiven. I forgive myself. I forgive myself. In Yeshua's name and by the power of his blood. In Yeshua's name and by the power of his blood. I cancel Satan's power in this issue. I cancel Satan's power in this issue. Holy Spirit, heal my heart. Holy Spirit, heal my heart. Renew my mind. Renew my mind. And tell me the truth. And tell me the truth. Tell me the truth. Anyone want to share? Uh, he, um, he whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Amen. Amen. I, the picture he gave me was a plate dirty. And I gave him the plate. And I said, this is dirty. And he said, I'll clean it. And then you know what he does with the plate after he cleans it? He gives it back to us. And he says, now, keep it clean. Because <laughs> you have an enemy who wants to mess up your plate again. But, and your job now is keep the plate clean. And you're going to do it better and better every time. Okay? You're going to do it excellently. Will you do it perfectly? Nope. None of us have gotten there yet. Okay, but we're learning and we're getting better and better at it. And we're getting better and better at recognizing these counterfeits because we're getting better at learning who our God is. False beliefs. I actually hear people say, oh, I believe in God and I believe in reincarnation. That's called mixing. Okay? That's called mixing. That's called double-minded. There cannot be those two things together. Uh, karma says that you have to pay, uh, you have to pay uh, an equal amount of good for all the bad you've done. That's not what scripture says. Get, scripture says you can't pay it. <laughs> Jesus is going to pay it for you. <clears throat> um, religious isms, all of the isms, drugs and alcohol, pol political views. You brought that up earlier. Science. Okay. Science, yeah. <laughs> Scientific. False beliefs within the church. Some say that God is arbitrary, that he's, he will say, he'll save you, but he won't save you. He'll forgive you, but he won't forgive you. That's called arbitrary. God isn't arbitrary. In fact, the scripture says it's a sin to be partial. It's a sin to be arbitrary. <coughs> so what do you believe about God? Do you believe that he's arbitrary, or do you believe he's the same all the time? Because if you believe he's the same, you can trust him. You can't, you can't trust a God who might hurt you. Right? Yeah. 
What's true faith? The scripture says truth. The, the world says faith is say, I believe, and then go live like the devil. The word of God says true faith is to follow his commandments. How is that a false belief within the church? Because church, there are churches that teach that. That teach what? That's that right. you don't have to follow the word. That you don't have to follow. That The teaching is that, oh, it's all paid for. You don't oh, have to do anything. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Greasy okay. grace, Greasy. they call it. Is obedience required? There are churches that, and that's why we call it false beliefs within churches. Okay, churches um, that that teach that obedience isn't necessary. That it's all taken care of. You, you can live like you want to live. Jesus loved you so much he would never send you to hell. Yeah. There are people who believe that Jesus is so good that at the last minute he's going to let everybody into heaven. <laughs> okay. Or he'll forgive everything. Or he'll forgive everything. Right. Without you asking. Without you asking. If you uh, come yeah. and ask, he will. Yeah. So what we, have, what we need to learn is what does the word say? Right. Because obedience helps you stay in the kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. I used to believe that I had to just wait till I die. Then then I could finally be happy. That's not true. That's not what the word of God says. The word, word of God says that you can be radiant with joy if you just look at him right now. Well, that's a pretty good prescription <laughs> to follow. Does God still steal Still heal. Yes. Absolutely. You know, Dr. Art, who wrote the book Biblical Foundation to Freedom and started this ministry, he was kicked out of the church that he was an elder in because God healed him and he <clears throat> said God healed him. And the church didn't believe that God healed. Wow. So there, uh, these are current beliefs in some places. And if you go into one and you hear it and you know the truth, you can immediately disagree with what's being, you know, not receive it. Don't receive it. Mm -hmm. Is that cessationism? That yes. Cessationism, yes. Cessationism. Yeah, that's what it's called, yeah. Um, and is it all in the anointing? There are people who will go travel all over the place to go to certain conferences to get to get prayed for by some special anointing anointed person. Well, the anointing comes from the Holy Spirit. And we can be smeared with the Holy Spirit. <laughs> we can be filled with the Spirit until it's overflowing. We get the Spirit by measures. And it's really more about, are you following the Word of God rather than the anointing? Okay, I have another question. Okay, please ask questions. So um, when people are having church services and they say they're going to release the anointing, is that, so is that witchcraft in the church? Or... It is a it is a time to activate faith. Okay, your the Holy Spirit operates the same way all spirits operate in that God made the spirits and the spirits have to follow God's rules and God's rules are they have to have your permission and you have to be willing to let the Holy Spirit yes, into you. Do. You have you invite the Holy Spirit. We were Christians for years and did not have the Holy Spirit because we were in churches that only said, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. That's all we knew, Holy Ghost. We knew nothing else about the Holy Spirit. And then we went to a place and we learned about the Spirit and we learned that we had to ask for God's Spirit and we got it. And then we learned that you can get God's Spirit by measures and that as you keep asking and as you keep asking, you can ask so much that it says, my cup runneth over. Yes. So it's, you get as much as you want of it, as much as you are willing to spend the time to receive it. Yeah. Holy Spirit taught me that he answers by invitation. It answers by yes. invitation. Yeah. That's why we say, Holy Spirit, tell me the truth. Now, sometime, bam, you get the answer right then and there. Sometimes in three days. Mm -hmm. right. Sometimes you'll be driving home 
after a class and you go, oh, that was it. Yeah, Jeremiah waited 10 days to get the answer. So um, the important thing is no, the answer's there. Seek and you will find. And it's keep on seeking, knock, and keep on knocking. Yeah, search and keep on searching and you will get it. Because that's, that's how the spirit operates, yeah. So there's, in medical practices, there are uh, the Western way, and the Western way is to treat symptoms. And because they both, the Western way of medicine believes that the chemical level is the smallest level. And so they treat with chemicals. It's logic, okay? Because they're into rational and logic. And that's called the Western way. And we are all Western. We've been raised in the Western way. And let me tell you the difference between the Western and the Eastern way in prayer. Oh, oh. you'll have to come back next week. Our time is up. Thank you for your truth. Thank you for the truth that sets me free. You see the difference between the two? Oh, yeah. 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 One has yeah. authority, the other has uncertainty. Yeah. Well, yeah. the other thing that it has to, can I just share yes. this, is that it's the word. <clears throat> it's his word. And so when you guys were talking earlier about speaking the word into your grandchildren, because his word never comes back void, yeah. and that we know that it's the truth that sets us free, not the binding and the loosing. Well, that is because when you speak the word into your thought life, when you speak it, it changes because it comes back void. That's why the counterfeiter wants to counterfeit our thoughts. Exactly. Yeah. Gets it, wants us yes. to say things that aren't true yes. and don't match the word of God. Yeah. yeah. And you have four minutes. To change that. Yeah. You know, you have four minutes to take it back. Remember when you were playing jacks and you did throw a throw a throw and you didn't like the throw and you say overs? <laughs> you have four minutes to do over. If you say something and you go, oh, Lord, forgive me for that. I take those words back. Because in four minutes, those proteins are laid down in your brain and that neuro, that neuro pathway has already started being built. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. The brains are amazing. But... Your thoughts are telling your brain what to do, which is why God said, take every thought, Kevin. It's all about your thought. Which do you choose? Amen. 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 All right, Father, thank you for your word that sets us free. Thank you that your word is established in heaven forever. Thank you that we have purpose on earth to establish your word in our hearts and as we speak. Father, thank you that your word never comes back empty that we can plant seeds of truth that grow in, through your Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father, for each person here tonight. May the words that were planted that have truth in them grow in each of our hearts. In Yeshua's name we pray. Amen. 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 Next week, we're going to do Kinsman Redeemer. Yeah. Hey, it's on. Yeah. So next week, see you next week. All right. No. Is that up there on the shelf?